You want to hesitate to avoid momentum in the stock market. The stock market tends to keep doing what it's been doing, and all it's been doing lately is it's been going down. This is the worst opening year for stocks since 1938. Let me give you my views and how I'm trading this monster. This is not financial nor professional advice. This video is for entertainment only. Hey everyone, the people that have their hands on your money, the banks, uh, are predicting that we're going to be in a recession. I think we're already in a recession. The first quarter's gross domestic product uh, was negative. If it's negative at the end of the second quarter, uh, that's the definition of we're in recession. And I believe we're in recession. It just hasn't been officially recognized yet. Uh, all the banks are, are saying that we're going to be in recession. I think the debate will change slightly from is it going to be a re recession to whether it will be a depression. Uh, Bank of America comes out and says we're going to have a recession. Goldman Sachs says we're having a recession. Wells Fargo says we're having a recession. I say we're already in a recession. Uh, the retailers are beginning to show slowing sales and a buildup of inventory. Amazon is down in a major way. Uh, Walmart uh, and Target being down is kind of shocking. They're supposed to do better in a recession because people go uh, to cheaper places and discount stores to buy their goods. So that's a really bad sign. Home Depot is going down, and I think I know that why that is. I've, I've fixed up my house about as much as I can. <laughs> you know, at some point, uh, you've fixed it up as much as you can. You've done enough. And also, people are just returning back to work. Not completely, uh, but a lot more than, than, the, than we're working away from home. The general trend of the market is down. There's no doubt about that. Even the intense bear rallies are just further confirmation of a, of a bear market. You know, some of the, the best gains in the stock market and the worst losses in the stock market, of course, have been made during bear markets. And you, you hear this myth, and I call it a myth uh, because I think it is, uh, that if you miss the 10 best trading days, uh, that, you, man, you're just way behind. And they'll quote figures like, if you, if you miss the best uh, 10 uh, bullish days on the market, uh, you're going to uh, not make 275%, you make like 75%, okay? But they've also done studies on what happens if you miss the 10 worst days in the market. And that tends to be much more dramatic. OK, if you miss the 10 worst days in the stock market, studies have shown that you make as much as 800 percent. OK, so in my mind, it's much more important to miss uh, the deep uh, dives that the market can take. And that's what I've observed with my own portfolio. And I'm just not doing it anymore. I'm not taking it anymore. Uh, and so uh, now uh, this bear market, uh, it's a day trader's dream, okay? Uh, basically, you have these bear market rallies, which are usually based on nothing more than Gee, it's gone down so far, it can't hardly go down anymore, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, just watch. <laughs> when that happens, I let it go up a couple hundred points, and then I wait for it to, to go back down. And then I might not jump in all at once, but if it keeps going down, I keep putting more in. That's just encouragement to me. Now, what happens is... When it's when it does this, uh, when the market's gone up a couple hundred points, and then somebody somewhere realizes, or everybody realizes, 
hey, you know, this raise is based on nothing. There's nothing but bad news coming out. Why are we doing this? And so predictably it crashes. So you just have a major uh, increase and a major decrease. And if you can be near the top on that increase and near the bottom on that decrease, wow, you're making uh, 10, 15 percent in a day. I think I'll take that. <laughs> OK, and and I've been having good luck with that. I, I don't hit it all the time, but I hit it enough to far outweigh my misses. And so I'm doing well with that, and I will continue to do that. My my favorite saying uh, these days is rinse and repeat. It's so repeatable until we get major good news. You know, we have a 50, uh, uh, a half point increase, a half a percentage uh, increase on the interest rate coming in June. We've been promised that. And... More significantly, I think we're being promised that they're going to uh, tighten. And that means that the Federal Reserve is going to sell the bonds that they bought to prop up the economy. And the Federal Reserve has trillions of dollars uh, of these bonds that they bought to uh, prop up the economy. I think I, I hear figures like eight or nine trillion. OK, so when they when they sell the bonds, what that is, is I will say they sell them back to the banks. OK, so the banks are, and, and to people sell to banks and people and people buy the bonds. So they're giving the Federal Reserve money for these bonds, which takes money out of the economy. So when the Federal Reserve tightens by selling these bonds, they, the interest rates have to increase to get anybody to buy these bonds because they're flooding the market with bonds that they bought. So that's going to be probably as much or more of an in, interest rate increase uh, propellant, I will call it, <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's like put it, throwing gas on the, on the fire is, is, is tightening and selling these bonds, uh, which increases your interest rates uh, on top of the half point interest rate we're being promised. I should say that I generally don't short the market. I only short the market during major uh, crashes like this because I've lived through enough of them and I kind of know how the story goes. And I, I'm going to play this the way I should have played. Uh, I, I learned as I went along and I did a little better, meaning I lost a little less. Well, this time I, I, I'm going, going to cash in. OK, it's about time to cash in, right? But the way I short the market is I short the index, the 100 largest companies on the NASDAQ. I use an, a triple leveraged inverse fund called SQQQ. And uh, it is a triple leverage. So for every dollar that this index goes down, you make $3. OK. And when the market has run up a couple hundred points in a in a bear rally based on nothing, and then it starts to turn meaningfully down. I jump into the SQQQ and put as put a lot in. Okay, I, sometimes I do it a little bit gradually. It depends on how sure I feel about it. Okay, I I find that I'll go in maybe two or three times. Okay, I I kind of like that. Uh, it seems a little safer, a little easier to, to do. Uh, but once I get in there and it's significantly down, I leave it until it reverses course, until the market starts to meaningfully turn up uh, again, which says, well, maybe that's enough for now. And in this world, long term means holding overnight. <laughs> okay. And this last Friday is a perfect example. The market didn't go up because anything fundamental ch changed at the end of the day. What happened is the short sellers like me made a lot of money and man, I'm getting out of Dodge while the getting's good. Okay. And especially I'm not going to leave it on over the weekend because God knows what can happen over the weekend. Although sometimes if you suspect bad news, 
I'm kind of torn on that one. Sometimes I'll leave a little bit on. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's plenty of time for it to go down if something bad happens. <laughs> and this is why I hate short selling is because it, to some degree you, you, you're not happy with good news. And I'm not like that. So I hate doing it. Uh, but when you're in a crash, you have to use this kind of reverse thinking. Uh, so, uh, but basically I'm out at the end of the day. And <clears throat> that's what you're going to see. The, the short sellers, they, they, they hold on until 3 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, about an hour before the market uh, closes. And the, then let the selling begin, <laughs> okay? And the buying always comes in the morning from people who think they're, they want to go down as a legend that they caught the bottom. Well, they're, they're going to catch part of the bottom. And they're just, they're just going to keep hitting that bottom too, <laughs> is the way it looks for right now anyway. The most upsetting thing about this particular crash <clears throat> is that Apple and Tesla, two great companies, are going down. And I know it's, it's valuation and they're getting their valuation reset uh, and it's necessary. And Tesla has a wonderful future and, and it will go up in the future. And I will want to try to catch that bottom. But it's going to have to reverse and then hold significantly. And it hasn't been able to do that in this environment. And I don't think any company, if, if Apple and Tesla can't do it, uh, nobody can do it, in my opinion. So those, those will be my bottom catches when the time is right, but we're nowhere near the time being right, in my opinion. This is not financial advice. I don't know your personal situation. Uh, I don't recommend people do what I do because I think I'm kind of unique uh, in uh, experiences with crashes. And frankly, I tend to do pretty well with crashes. I do good w w when the market's going up too. And I, it's a lot more fun. Boy, was 2020 like the all time uh, fun year. <clears throat> I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might become a QQQ ch trader. And when the market turns uh, bullish, not only will I invest in the QQQ, but I'll invest in the TQQQ, which is the triple QQQ, which means for every point that the market goes up, I'll go up three points. <laughs> you know, I think I could base a whole investing strategy on that. So you're three times in it on the upside and, and uh, three times in it on the downside, which makes sense. But you only do this when you're almost almost certain that it's going to go down and almost certain that it's going to go up. A regular market, you know, it tends to go up. QQQ is probably a good bet generally for most of the time. Uh, and that's the, who I am. That's the way I roll. <laughs> good luck with your investing. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so I can wake you up in the middle of the night and have a good day. Bye-bye.